Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Ben. I'm Karen. We're the shippers. And we are illustrators, writers, and designers. And we love print books, we love printed materials, and um, we're going to talk today about Warwick Hutton, uh, a UK illustrator, um, and uh, his adaptive work. We're just going to look at one book um, that I found up in Pennsylvania recently, and it blew my mind. And um, we're going to talk about this one. Uh, but first, um, I am finishing up uh, Joe Death and the Graven Image. Um, I'm turning in the files to Dark Horse Comics, and hopefully it'll be printed at the end of this year. But if you want to um, follow what I'm doing more closely, you can go to benjaminshipper.com and um, check out my newsletter um, called Old Noggin. And, uh, okay. and I likewise have a newsletter called Fun Times, and you can sign that sign up for that on my website, karenshipper.com. And in this newsletter, it's a weekly newsletter where we talk about um, just things I'm learning and things that will encourage your creativity. So yeah, let's dive into Warwick Hutton. All right, so, uh, so he did adaptive work. He's a really good adaptive author. Um, and he did uh, biblical stories and uh, Greek and Roman stuff. Um, and there's even more books than these uh, that I, I don't have yet, but I really want them. <laughs> but I bought these all for like under $10 um, individually, more than $10 collectively. But this is the book that really uh, inspired me to check him out. And um, so this is, I think, special to me because like I you know, grew up in the church and I've been around Christian art for a long time. Um, and it's all, it primarily, it's all kind of pinched to me. It's, um, uh, either trying to be like very historically accurate. Um, you know, it's a lot of painstaking detail with, uh, the robes of the time. And it's like, there's a lot of research heavy stuff. I feel like, um, that pervades a lot of, uh, Protestant Christian art. Um, and it's, it's, it's very tight and very kind of pinched to me. It doesn't... Or even, I think, yeah. like, really animated in the sense of, like, we have to make it really kid-friendly. Or mm. um, if it's not for kids, then I have to make it very, like, historically accurate. Um, yeah. But I think Warwick Hutton um, does it so poetically. Yeah, poetically, right. Like, it, it, fits, it fits the elements that are in the Bible, I feel like, like the Bible as poetry, the Bible as literature. Um, I think he comes along and really adds to it. Uh, well, in a, it expands, makes it, makes it um, very imaginative. I mean, even looking at this, you know, this isn't a tree. <laughs> it's a, it's a giant plant. Uh, and you've got little Adam over here, little Eve and, um, and two giraffes, like, and a little lion, like it's all, um, it's poetic. It's illustrative. It's not um, informative. It's not like um, informative on a materialistic sense. You know, like how how often would you have it? You know, it, you know. It's not. It's not trying to describe exactly what you would see. Um, he's really adding beauty, I think, into this imagination. Um, and it's a very human work. I think all his work is very human uh, in the sense that he's not trying to. Um, He's not trying to make a perfect illustration. He's not trying to make a perfect lion or human. It's very uh, organic. His lines are very um, loose and free. And he lets the know. like watercolor elements kind of like come through with like just letting loose and um, letting the medium kind of speak for itself while um, bringing his imagination to the table. Um, yeah, it's my first time really seeing the Garden of Eden portrayed in this way with these kind of trees you hear about like the fruit the fruit of good and evil is that what it is mm -hmm. um and everybody always portrays it as like a very specific kind of fruit but i feel like he just kind of you know had fun with it <laughs> yeah it it doesn't i don't see in this book a lot of like um you know it's, i don't feel that he had you know kind of a, a large church element over his shoulder being like well make you know make sure that this is correct and um you know, it seems like, I don't know his religious background, but it's like he, he understood what kind of Christian liberty was. It's uh, in interacting with, um, you know, God and uh, and what he's given you through your, your gifts and that kind of thing. Um, but 
Uh, so let's let's go in first uh, page. Uh, this title page, and he gives us something here, uh, which is really nice, like the text interaction with the the image, and um, you know. <laughs> so interesting thing about awesome. Warwick Hutton was when he was younger, he um, engraved on cathedral, like uh, in the glass, like glass engraver. Um, His father and was a, yeah, a and so I, I mean, like I feel like some of this kind of um, emulates a little bit of that, like the like composition of it. Mm -hmm. Um, the symmetry of things, um, but then like knowing how to use a space. Um, I do think yeah. this is kind of weird how Adam and Eve <laughs> was just cut cutting the giraffe's, giraffe's heads off. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the design element. Yeah, yeah. The design yeah. is really, really nice. Um, and all his books too are very consistent with an illustration on the on the front there, and then a little like spot um, dedicated to someone. Um, it was really cool to have have the collection and see it tied together, but it is just uh, the biblical story. I don't think um, it's maybe taken from the King James, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. It's just it's just word for word from the Bible, um, and you know, start start with darkness. And I think it's a. I mean, it's always interesting to see how people or like illustrators and authors adapt a story, especially a story this old. You know, like there is so many iterations of it and so how is he bringing the um the freshness to it and like um this is really something that really creates a sense of wonder for me i think like yeah um, the perspective here it's like it's like you're standing somewhere it's not it's not like you're you know it's not like an infograph or um you know i feel very in much in the scene you know, seeing the horizon uh seeing the reflection of the sun here and the reflection of the moon here there's little details you know like this is you know it's uh it's illustrative it's not it's not materialistic um land comes up out of the water stars by night and uh this by this at, at this bit page i was like okay i'm walking out of here with this book um, and it, it was, uh, it was at Baldwin's book barn near Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It's about an hour from Pennsylvania, uh, Lancaster. And, um, it's an amazing store. So check that out. Uh, it has a lot of really cool, uh, finds. Um, but, but this, this, uh, illustration was like, okay, I'm coming out of here. It, it reminds me very much with, um, of, uh, Mobius, like, uh, just the delicate pen lines, um, and the brightness of it, like there's high contrast, but it, it, it feels together like it's very bright light um, as like, a, you know, kind of classic God, you know, he's drawing God, you know, it's probably best to, you know, keep his face away from the camera, away from the audience and have it be very bright. Um, the source of light kind of thing and it him casting shadows uh, out in here in the forest and um, Adam coming up from the, the dust. This was interesting. I mean, I um, grew up in the Christian church and um, I've heard the story so many times, um, but seeing this image, it really made an impact on me because I never, I, I don't think I've ever like kind of like put any pictures to my, like on my mind of how it says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Like, you know, you always hear, like, the man returns to the earth. But he actually brought him up from the ground. And seeing that, you know, imagery really was, I don't know, it just really spoke to me. Yeah. It, you, brought you, a newness. You're not trying to, yeah, yeah, you're not trying to get, like, how did this work exactly? It's just, you know, we're talking about God here. So it's not like, uh, it's not like you need to uh, say exactly how it worked. It's just yeah. in the it's beautiful. It's magical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a and that and he captures that so well in his illustrations, uh, and the plants again like the plants are like my one of my favorite parts yeah. of it where he's not you know he's he's almost looking at his garden, uh, well you know and this is a garden, um, and so it's like it's almost like they're tiny people. I like to think of yeah. them as tiny. Uh, <laughs> this is people. so beautiful. Like I love the perspective of this. Of like, it's yeah, it's so it's so fun. Yeah, it, it's just fun. It's like making like a little, I don't know, it's like a kid playing like, um, you know, having a plane here. And it's, it's kind of geometric, but not like, um, 
not like stiff. Uh, it's really interesting that type of just play that you get to see through through a gap in a in kind of a gorge valley and a little uh, a little uh, bridge. <laughs> <laughs> And the uh, animals coming up from the ground. Yeah. Um, there's a little light. Uh, yeah, it's just it's super fun. Like I think in Narnia uh, as well, the animals come up from the ground, but he uh, kind of does it with like um, kind of like a bubble, like a bubbling kind of. Uh, um... Sorry, we're gonna. We have to close the blinds here real quick. Yeah. So y'all can see Studio the quality. image. <laughs> shuffle, shuffle. Yeah. So, and this is kind of important, I think, to narrative fiction. If you're if you're wanting to do a big epic story, you know, you sort of have to have a cosmology. Like, I think a lot of people get hung up, or they don't do this, and therefore their stories seem lacking in a lot of ways. So, Tolkien, you know, we all love Lord of the Rings. We know about it, but he has a cosmology that happened in the Silmarillion. It's about the creation of the world. Same in Narnia. Um, and I think if you want to talk about big, you know, epic stories and kind of even um, classic good and evil kind of elements, you should kind of figure out how to, you know, you should, I think you should, you know, go to uh, go to the biblical text and, and figure out how it's done there. But uh, this is, yeah, again, illustration. It's just so fun. Like he loves drawing lions. There will yeah. be a lion <laughs> in like a lot of his books, yeah. and I love his lions. First, uh, first nude man here in the no, book. No, no, no. We saw. Oh, I guess we did. Yeah. yeah. But um, his uh, humans are really like they're just really uh, there's that is another element in which like American Christians are are really uh, they really grapple with. It's not. It's a very kind of uncomfortable kind of like. Thing, I think in art um, to figure out how do you draw naked people without making them sort of pornographic you know which is obviously a big no-no in uh, in the Christian uh, in, uh, circle um, but uh, I think you know he achieves it well where there's uh, humanity to all of his figures they're not um, debased they're not like gross mm -hmm. but they're not like trying to be perfect mm -hmm. visual specimens of you know mm -hmm. perfection an Olympian or, or anything like that. Um, um, I love this page, like the like the composition of how it just like brings you into this. <laughs> you yeah. have like Adam like <laughs> lying <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> yeah. And there's his little lines yep. again. Uh, yeah. And again, the faces are away. Like yeah. Eve coming up, got you got bringing her out of uh, a man's right. rib, uh, Adam's rib, and yeah, the perspective like it's so delicate, like. What's the golden spiral? Is that the... Um, the golden mean. I think it would go this mean. way, but yeah. I guess... I mean, it depends on how yeah, you switch. Yeah, yeah. But then um, he also red. uses... Yeah, like, the co the way he uses color really, like, brings the eye, like, from the blues and, like, moving that up and with the yellows and the brand of lions and giraffes in here, too. But then with the white, like, really, like, highlighting that. So that becomes your emphasis on the page. Yeah. A little, yeah, faint, like, red up here in the sky, yeah. too, is really nice. Um all right, double page. And we get like these, you know, sort of palm, you know, kind of flower. Uh, Paradise seed. Yeah, and like kind of classic symmetry here, like with two lions on the side and two giraffes and two donkeys or rhinos or dinosaurs, <laughs> raptors. <sighs> um, but, <laughs> Even the butterflies. Yeah, the butterflies, yeah. It's a, uh, I mean, it's iconographic. It's, I, yeah. you know, I don't exactly know what uh, the symmetry means, but other than sort of, a, I guess, perfection maybe. Um, but really cool things he's doing with like uh, lighting, like effects, like mm -hmm. streak of like sort of dry brush. And um, also he'll do sort of lines. Let's just go with, you know, it might be too faint to see on the camera, but he'll just have these like pen lines. Passage, and, yeah. Yeah, they or don't hatch really lines. cross. Yeah, yeah hatch just lines. hatching. Yeah, <laughs> which I, I I don't love, but it doesn't matter. I I don't know. I, I don't it know works, what they would works. look like yeah. if uh, if if it was without it. But yeah. I think I saw an illustration where Mobius hatched, um, mm. and I was like, I don't like this, but um, but no, it works for yeah. you know, it works when you need it to. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
Eve getting tempted by the serpent. Um, again, she's, you know, facing away. It, eh. There's a, there's a point where they'll be facing us and it's actually, I don't know, it's actually hard to uh, see their faces. Anyway, but this is a great, like, subtle composition. Like, I like the interaction there and um, all these little things happening. There's this little mouse there mm -hmm. and um, her biting the fruit. It's, it's, you know, in this story, it's very, it would be a very, you know, it's, it is the thing that is going to separate man from God, you know, and I think having like a kid now, it's like, I understand the story more or uh, in a different way. Like for instance, Abel has toys and lots of things he can play with. But when we say, don't play with those knives in the, um, you know, in the washer, he wants to play with those knives in the washer. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, you know, and I think that is helpful when thinking like, yeah, God has provided all, all these things for Adam and Eve. Um, but there is one thing that he doesn't want them to have, but, and that's the thing that they want to have, you know, it's kind of an interesting, um, play of like, um, Nature. kind of like a father and children actually, yeah. um, parents and children. But, um, yeah, here we go. We got, we got a uh, full frontal veal of Adam and Eve and their eyes are really vacant. This, this is one of those unsettling things about his illustration that I find <laughs> odd, but Cause um, yeah, all his humans are pretty like stiff, I think like, but I, I think it's kind of charming. I don't mind yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind yeah. the eyes to me. I, I don't know if I can take them, but <laughs> it's a, it's a good, um, obviously, obviously I, I'm reviewing this cause I like this, <laughs> but yeah, the composition, like the floral patterns, just the shapes of bushes, like Really, it's, I feel like it's often really hard for people to draw, um, let's say comic artists especially, draw floral uh, elements or trees, getting really bogged down in like the details um, and his really thin pen lines that don't always need to connect, I think really helps. It doesn't define mm -hmm. like a lot, but I think the yeah. changes of colors and textures um, really allow you to like, see see the plants as they are yeah yeah it's i mean it's more iconographic more than anything i think mm -hmm. like um and i i mean i think one of the things about like the way he draws his people kind of reminds me of like statues a little or like how like a um, a sculptor would do a drawing of his sculpture his like bust you know yeah. before he hmm. um carves it yeah carves it or something yeah. like and the perspective, it's like awesome. And it's not, it's, it's like just, he has a really good eye for like size. So like God over here, plants over here, the horizon line, I, you know, I'm not seeing her, I'm not seeing anything that's cluing me into like, um, perspective other than size differences, mm -hmm. um, and, and overlapping. This is really good. The shadow. Yeah. Like yeah. of like the glow, you know, the glowing God. <laughs> yeah. But and um, he is, it yeah. works really well, like just the facing holiness them. of yeah. Yeah, facing them, casting. The I shadow. mean, this is the first time you see where, where the humans, you know, where Adam and Eve are not in the lit as well. Like it's hmm. kind of a. Yeah, they're they're in shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And I really don't, I'm going to try to draw shadows more for this next book. And, uh, cause I really don't draw shadows a lot, um, cast shadows, at, uh, but this is super successful. Even the snake as well, mm -hmm. getting that like S curve and, um, and again, it's, you know, back to the kids uh, and a, and a parent kind of thing where it's like, uh, you know, who gave, who gave, you know, why did you eat the apple you know, to Adam? And then Adam's like, well, Eve gave it to me. And then he's like, well, why did you give him the apple? And she's like, well, the snake told me to. <laughs> and it, and it's like, well, you know, we're all, you know, you all have choice here. Uh, so you all kind of messed up. Um, so, you know, there's, uh, very unfortunate consequences for, um, sin entering, entering the world here, there's a, there's a break, there's a break between a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, it was very close. 
I think here too, like you kind of see that, like now there's a consequence. What this, what the garden is a very good place and they're going to have to be cast out into a dark, you know? Mm, like, yeah. Yeah. Start, starting, like, starting to see things get Yeah, darker. it's almost like foreshadowing, yeah, like yeah. the consequence of things. Um, but then not like very... Uh, the opposite of bluntly, like not very um, subtle. Yeah, very subtly. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like that brightness, like again, it's like whew, like a spotlight shining out, and the, everything gets kind of more dull. There's like lightning up here. <laughs> is, that, is that a nice touch? Yeah. Um, and I think this is the first time where you see the trunk of the tree too, like uh -huh. some dead. Some yeah. Dead right. Yeah. Somewhere. Dead trees. Um, I love I love mm -hmm. the shape of these trees still though. Like yeah, I just these trees are so fun. It reminds me of like succulents more than anything. Yeah. Giant succulents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some kudzu. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. that's, that's not gonna be fun to deal with. Um yeah, and it ends I mean it ends with that. It's it's this a is very, super it, iconographic. Like uh, it's like yeah. yeah, like it's just like Yeah, placing fun. the cherubim uh to protect the garden mm -hmm. it's like yeah and, and even here there's like a sky that's lit and and the sky outside of it is dark mm -hmm. and it's an odd you know i don't know how well these sold you know i've actually never seen these i love books this. yeah um i've never seen these books before in my life so i and this is the first printing so i don't you know i don't know how successful they were as books to be sold. He did do a lot of them. So it's like the publisher really um, liked it and I'm sure they were successful in their time. It's just an interesting thing where I, I do think this is a very artistic work. Um, this is also, you know, it's all Bible. Um, so no, he can't be faulted for like you know, trying to be creative there. I mean, and also um, I wonder if it like actually didn't really fit in like, you know, a Sunday school like setting too yeah, because it's so not that, literal, you know, like, yeah. Um, and you do see nudes, and mm. so you know some parents might not prefer that, but yeah. I think, and maybe that's why it wasn't so popular. Like, it didn't really fit in either, you know. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah. It probably, yeah. I, I, I imagine it was one of those things that is lost uh, just because of I don't know. Just America is a weird place. So he is a UK person. America does a lot of weird things with Christianity, uh, and there's a lot of throwing throwing out of um, material that that we don't like, and I think that's in a lot of different uh, yeah. communities, especially now. But um, yeah, yeah. Some, something to something to really, uh, I I I just want to draw when I look at his stuff. Yeah, I just want to draw uh, and have fun. That's what I'm seeing, you know, everywhere. And the lions are like the biggest example of that. Yeah. <laughs> think, but yeah. Warwick Hutton, check him out. Get his books yeah. if you wanna wanna have some fun. Yeah. And once again, um, you can find me at benjaminshipper.com. Uh, sign up for my newsletter and, and karenshipper.com and sign up for fun times. Yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, talk to you next time. Yeah. Share the channel if uh, you enjoyed it and. Um, and you know other people that would like this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, subscribe as well if you would like to uh, see the next one. But uh, thanks again.